Hello, my name is Gabriela Stefanova and I will present you the Model 4 Basic Aspects for Financial International Entrepreneurship. The general objective of this module is to know the essential financial aspects of a foreign trade operation. At the end of the corresponding sessions of this module, it is expected that each student has got to know, first, the main means of collection payment used in international trade, advantages and disadvantages of each one when operating as an exporter and as an importer, uh, the most appropriate use of each means of payment collection, the concept and applicability of export credit insurance, the basic characteristics of the spot and forward currency markets, and last, exchange risk coverage. There is no doubt that an entrepreneur, when launching a project on an international scale, must face a series of fundamental financial aspects for the success of their activity. That is why an entrepreneur must know the financial and economic factors to which his or her operations uh, will be subject in the international arena. The financial factors that directly influence international business transactions can be classified in three aspects. The first one is the exchange rate and currencies. One of the fundamental elements in international trade is the exchange rate and the normative behind. The second one is the collection payment means. Its function is to cancel existing debts between the subjects of the economic transaction, the importer and the exporter. And last, stand by insurance of activities. It allows exporter to insure against the risk of non-payments and depending on the type, also the importer to cover its risks, for example mer merchandise, prepayment, production and for other external contingencies. This model will provide entrepreneurs with practical information on how to identify the most appropriate payment methods and required credit facilities. In today's complicated and complex societies and economies, there is almost always uncertainty. The entrepreneur, then, pays off in an attempt to see every risk that can compromise the profit presented in a transnational transaction. To do so, he or she should have knowledge and or information of the two most common risks, currency risk and non-payment risk. Currency risk happens when variations in the value of money change from time to time. For example, when an entrepreneur makes his or her offer, the value in national currency of the amount in foreign currency of an export operation may vary from the one when actually he or she receives the funds. This is important since variation in the exchange rates may affect the expected profit of the transaction. In order to avoid these risks, Entrepreneurs mostly prefer to make their transactions under currency markets where the currencies are of different countries are exchanged based on rates. Those markets are classified into main categories, spot market and forward market. However, where are those markets? In reality, there is no central location for the foreign exchange market. It is a distributed electronic market with nodes in financial companies, central banks and brokerage houses. Forex trading 24 hours a day, 7 days a week can be segmented into regional market hours based on peak trading hours in New York, London, Sydney and Tokyo. The foreign exchange market is the largest in the world with an average daily trading value of $6.6 .6 trillion and the world's most traded currencies are according to BIS 2019, the United States, uh, States dollar, it has 63% of monetary reserves by volume, the euro with 20% of global volume reserves, the Japanese yen 4.9%, uh, pound sterling 4.5%, the Australian dollar 1.8%, the Canadian dollar 2.02%, the Swiss franc 0.18%, uh, the Chinese renminbi 1.23%, the Hong Kong dollar and the New Zealand dollar. In the currency markets, currencies are quoted and exchanged with each other at certain prices. The exchange rate is the price of one currency in terms of another. 
there are two fundamental contribution systems. The first one is the direct rate of one currency against another. This expresses the amount of national currency for each unit of foreign currency. What is listed in the purchase or sale of a foreign monetary unit? The second is the indirect rate from the euro to the dollar, uh, which is the inverse of the previous one, expresses uh, the amount of foreign currency for each unit of national currency. What is listed is the purchase or sale of a national monetary unit. The currency that is in the unit is known as the base currency and the one that varies in value with respect to the base currency unit uh, is known as counterpart currency. In Europe, after the creation of the euro, we are expected to use the indirect rate for transactions. Exchange rates are unique uh, worldwide since the market is global, uh, within their constant variation, of course. This means uh, that the exchange rates in the wholesale market cannot be very different at any given moment uh, in one part or another of the world. Nevertheless, they will never be exactly the same in all operators since it is a private market in which entities change their purchase or sale prices according to their currency stocks, expectations, requests from their clients, etc. Exchange rates between two currencies can be fluctuating or fixed or quasi-fixed. This depends on the interaction of market forces and the intervention of public authorities, mainly central banks. In the case of fluctuating exchange rates, the fluctuation can be clean without the intervention of the public authorities or dirty with the intervention of the public authorities in the sense that they always consider appropriate. On the other hand, fixed or quasi-fixed exchange rates, uh, there are cases in which a certain band of fluctuation around the fixed exchange rate is allowed. All these modalities currently coexist in the world. When the currencies have fixed changes between them, their alteration is called devaluation or revaluation. When the currencies are in a fluctuation regime, complete or within an allowed band, their movements are called depreciation or appreciation. We are not going to cover how the exchange rates are manipulated or fluctuate, but we are going to explain the two types of market exchange previously mentioned, spot market and forward market. We understand the spot currency market as the one in which the currencies are rated for delivery, value date, within a maximum of two market days after the transaction date. When deliveries occur beyond that term, we would be facing the forward currency market. The difference between spot and forward market is simply the price of the currency contracted at this time for delivery, then in six month rate in which will be different. Of course, the spot uh, price in six months will be different uh, from today and can be very different. This structure and operation of the forward currency market is precisely what allows exporters and importers to avoid exchange risk. An EU entrepreneur that has received an order from Mexico and plans to collect in US dollars, for example, within six months, uh, has the possibility of selling those dollars in installments at an exchange rate that is set in advance without being subject to the fluctuations of the dollar-euro price or therefore risking the profitability uh, calculated for the operation as a consequence of the variation in exchange rates. Even when the forward currency contract is closed today, the delivery of the dollars and therefore the payment of the euros will be made within six months at the exchange rate already fixed and regardless of what the euro-dollar spot price is at that time. Similarly, for an EU entrepreneur who imports and plans to make a payment in Japanese yen within three months, entrepreneurs can buy in advance within three months the yen that will need later. It is thus safe from possible fluctuations in the yen euro price. The yen will be delivered within three months and at that time the agreed euros will be owed. These strategic operations can be carried out regularly for periods of up to one year. Further, there is the possibility of coverage, but it is much more unusual. And within that year, 
coverage can be made at any intermediate date and for any quantity. It is what is known as an over-the-counter market. It is important to mention that there is no such an insurance as the formal way we know to cover a fluctuation in the exchange rates. Therefore, to plan ahead these strategies for exchange rate according to the international transaction delivery can help to reduce the risk of losing the profit expected. To be successful in today's global market and overshadow your foreign competitors, entrepreneurs taking international activities must offer their customers attractive terms of sale backed by appropriate payment methods. This will ensure that potential buyers not only appreciate the quality of your products, but as well the way in which the transaction commercialization is done. The ultimate goal for entrepreneurs is receiving full and timely payment for every export sale. Therefore, an appropriate payment method must be carefully chosen to minimize the risk of payment and at the same time meet the importer's needs. First of all, let's understand which are the key components in a transnational transaction. As shown in Figure 1, there is usually four uh, actors involved uh, in a transnational transaction importers, exporters, and banks that represent each one. The first component of this structure is a network of international banking relations, uh, which will allow exporters and importers to achieve their responsibilities in an international transaction. Before any entrepreneur contacts a potential client to carry out an international operation, entrepreneurs must search for a structure that will allow it to deal with international transactions quickly and safely and with a different degree of involvement depending on the needs of him and the buyer. The network that allows banks to play a decisive role in channeling funds from the international operations is supported by correspondent agreements uh, that financial institutions establish among themselves. With their services, transnational transactions are expedited with the necessary transfer of funds and, if requested, to reduce the uncertainty and ignorance uh, that usually exists between commercial parties about potential risks that arise uh, on collecting money and on merchandise arrival. Also, they can finance a transaction if requested. Now that we have understood the importance of banks in mediation, it is time to understand which the collection payment means are. As shown in Table 1, there are five main payment methods for international transactions. During or before contract negotiations, you should consider which is mutually desirable. The collection payments are various contractual figures of a legal, commercial, nature uh, that allow the transfer of funds from the buyer to the seller. These contractual figures uh, will be supported in regulations of mandatory compliance and or on private origin to the extent in which the parties, importer and exporter, agree. Based on Table 1, the choice of collecting payment means uh, need to take into account the aspect related to the quickness in transaction opposite to security, those of security in turn opposed to cost and time, financial possibilities, uh, which is important to review the financing possibilities as some means of payment do not allow the financing of commercial operation due to the risks, and elements such as the interests of the parties, uh, often conflicting between importer and exporter or the characteristics of the buyer's country as there are countries with difficulties in international payments in which it may be advisable to take additional precautions. In this sense, the transnational transactions can be supported by banks related to guarantees, later on explained, uh, or financing but without interfering the different procedures related to the transaction itself, you can see also at figure 2, or uh, they can take a more active role and in being involved completely in the transaction process. Banks can manage a wide variety of commercial documents such as invoice, transport document, transport insurance document, list of contents and various certificates to make sure that the transaction will be done with all uh, the required documents and to ensure the smooth transaction from a legal basis. Of course, Banks are also operating the financial documents 
such as a check bill of exchange, promissory note receipt, etc., which is more in line with the expected services from them. However, banks do not manage or manipulate merchandise, the product to be exported. Uh, they only offered financial, financial and or legal documents required in the custom offices for the correct entry of products if requested by exporter or importer. Based on this, we can classify collection payment means in two categories. On one hand, non-documentary collection means in which banks exclusively handle financial documents and on the other hand, documentary collection means in which banks are dealing with commercial documents accompanied or not by financial documents. The second one is more expensive and less agile due to the fact that banks will generally be incurring in greater risks, which uh, will translate into additional costs such as the documentary fee. Thus, the commercial transaction will vary depending on several factors. For example, an entrepreneur whose first sale will be uh, to an unknown client outside EU will choose a consignment in which banks play an active role not only on the financial documents but on the merchandise documents. As a result, different means of collection will depend on the amount of the transaction, the collection period, the type of client, the degree of relationship between buyer and seller, the country in which the buyer is, the payment customs uh, usually used in the sector or in the country, and so on. In international trade, the payment is sent to the exporter only after the foreign distributor has sold the goods to the end customer. This is arranged by an international consignment transaction in which the importer receives, manages and sells the goods of the exporter who retains ownership of the goods until they are sold. This type of arrangement is usually requested when the importer does not know if the product will have a market share in their country, so exporters send a moderate quantity to test, or in other cases big quantities can be sent since the importer functions as an agent of the product. Adequate insurance must exist to cover consent goods in transit or in the possession of a foreign distributor as well as to mitigate the risk of non-payment. With advanced cash payment terms, the payment is done and received before the goods arrive to import. For international sales, bank transfers, credit cards and checks uh, are the most widely used cash advance options available to exporters. This method is very suitable for exporters, but very difficult to implement as the importer will look for someone else with better terms of payments. Goods are delivered before the payment due date, which is typically uh, 30, 60 or 90 days for international sales. Exporters are usually pressured to take this type of method, so entrepreneurs must mitigate default uh, risk through the use of one or more of the appropriate insurances and guarantees uh, later on explained. In this type of method, we can find the payment through a simple payment uh, a bank check or by a checking account. The procedure takes between 7 to 10 steps based on the way of the payment method. For example, in a simple payment the international transaction starts when the goods are sent to the importer. Then the exporter sends almost immediately the documents representative of the merchandise, the invoice, transport document, transport insurance document, etc. to the importer. After that, the importer uh, with the documents can withdraw the goods from the destination country customs. Then the importer issues a payment order to his bank with authorization of funds. After that, the importer's bank uh, delivers the funds to the paying bank, communicating the details of the transaction via SWIFT. Finally, the bank enters the amounts in the exporter's account or pays it once identified. The difference between a simple payment and a bank check is the additional steps from the bank to issue uh, the check until it is in the hands of the exporter and then from the exporter presenting the check to his or her bank until he or she receives the money. Another difference is between the distinctions of drawer and drawee. 
In the personal check, the one who issues the check is the buyer and he's the drawer. And the drawing is his bank because the bank will have to pay the check with the funds that the buyer has in the account. On the other hand, in the bank check in foreign currency, it is important to make a distinction of who is the drawer and who is the drawn. The buyer's bank is the one that issues the check and therefore uh, it is the drawer. And the one that pays the check is the correspondent bank of the buyer's bank that will be the drawn. The correspondent bank pays uh, with the money that the buyer's bank drawer uh, has uh, previously deposited in the correspondent account in foreign currency. Moreover, there is a possibility that the buyer's bank can be both drawer and drawing of the check. This happens uh, when the bank check is drawn up in the currency of the country where the issuing bank, the buyers, uh, is located. A bill of exchange is a commitment by a bank on behalf of the buyer that uh, payment will be made to the exporter, providing that the terms and conditions set in this document have been met. The importer pays his bank for the services that in return will verify all the submitting documents and after, a bank, after that uh, the bank pays the exporter. For a bill of exchange, it's convenient to know who the drawer and the drawee is. The drawer is the seller who issues the bill of, of exchange and the drawee uh, is the buyer, uh, the one that will acquire a debt. The bank is usually the holder. The holder is the one who gives the bill with the rights uh, in, in corporate. After advancing its amount to the drawer or simply receiving it to manage the collection. There can be more uh, than one holders, so this means that there can be more than one banks involved. However, the last holder uh, is the one that has the right to collect from the drawy buyer, since it is the last one to advance the amount uh, or the one in charge of managing the final collection. A documentary collection transaction is characterized by the active role of the exporter banks for the collection of the payment of a sale. Therefore, the initiative of the collection process is therefore taken by the seller. The exporter bank sends documents that the importer needs to provide to his or her bank, the collecting bank, with the instructions on how the transfer of ownership of the goods will take from. The funds are received from the importer and are remitted to the exporter through the banks involved in the collection in exchange for those documents. This method involves the use of a draft uh, that requires a document against payment or a payment on a specific date, uh, the document against acceptance. The most common documents included in this method are the invoice of goods, transport documents of uh, the merchandise, transport insurance document, packing list, certificate of origin or other certificate, bill of exchange, and last, the receipt on collection. The process in this type of transaction is as, uh, one, the goods are sent, two, the exporter delivered to his or her bank the representative documents of the merchandise and the instructions of what to do with them. Three, the exporter's bank uh, forwards the documents and instructions to the importer bank. Four, uh, the importer's bank notifies the exporter of the existence of the remittance. Five, the importer's pay and the bank delivers the documents complying with the instructions for the remittance given by the exporter. Six, the presenting bank delivers the funds to the sending bank, notifying it via SWIFT. 7. Uh, the remitting bank enters the money into the exporter's account. And 8. With the documents, the importer can remove the merchandise from customs. A standby is a legal document uh, issued by a bank that assures the seller, beneficiary of the guarantee, the correct fulfillment of the same by the buyer of the provision, otherwise the bank will be responsible by paying to the beneficiary, seller, uh, the amount agreed upon his or her first request. As in other types of guarantee, 
the guarantor or guarantor bank will pay the beneficiary of the guarantee in the event that the principal obliger uh, guaranteed client does not do so but the main characteristic is that this payment from the bank is made at the first request of the beneficiary and without uh, there being a link between the guarantee and the main contract. That means that the guarantee operates autonomously and independently of the underlying relationship and the subsidiarity characteristics of uh, other guarantees are not applicable. In more simple words, it is an irrevocable bank commitment to pay a beneficiary when he or she fails to collect from the payer or buyer under the agreed conditions. The bank commitment is made effective upon presentation by the beneficiary of certain documents in each case, including, uh, in an essential way, the unilateral declaration of the beneficiary of not having received the payment from the buyer. The process usually starts with the arrangement of the contract of selling, where it is stipulated that there is the emission of standby. Then, the buyer goes to his or her bank to request the opening of standby in favor of the exporter, indicating the terms and stipulations of this. After that, the buyer's bank analyzes the operation and the risk to be assumed and decides whether or not to accept the request of this client. Once decided, it communicates the opening of the standby through another bank, usually the bank of the seller, by means of a specific swift message. Then, the bank that has received the opening communication notifies the exporter of the opening in its favor of a standby and the conditions for its use. Normally, after the notification, the exporter sends the goods to his or her client with the respective commercial documents, the invoice, transport document, transport insurance document, uh, etc. Then, the importer with commercial documents in hand can remove the merchandise from customs and then the buyer pays the seller. After that, in case the seller does not receive any payment, uh, the buyer can declare the non-payment to his or her bank to send the documents, uh, a copy of commercial documents such as invoice and transport document, to the issuing bank. Finally, the issuing bank analyzes the documents and if they meet standby conditions, it pays to be to the beneficiary the funds uh, corresponding to merchandise shipped. As we have seen with the different methods to collect the payment, it is not simple to do transnational operations. Therefore, it is important that uh, no matter which our method is, to do the transaction we must have a security for the payment of the operations. This security can be by advanced payments, documentary collection means, or standby, etc. However, what to do uh, when these mentioned methods are not possible to implement? Well, we can apply to credit insurances. A credit insurance means that entrepreneurs will obtain a commitment through an insurance company that if he or she does not collect the amount of the sale, they will be compensated for the non-payment by the insurance company. When it is not possible to assure that the payment will be before or at the same time as the goods are being provided to the importer or buyer, then it is convenient to have a credit insurance before the contract is agreed by both parties, the buyer and the seller. Since there can be many procedures and factors, uh, there is a wide range of possibilities in credit insurance reflected in different types of policies, which include both insurance of the exporter and the banks due to the risk they assume when financing the operation. Let's see which are the different types of insurance. The first is related to the commercial operational process and by this we mean the risk that exists from the moment the buyer applies for a request of goods until he or she receives the merchandise. For example, uh, when the buyer have received the goods but the payment is not issued. Or uh, when the buyer cancels the request of the goods but uh, there has been already a progress in the development of goods, or finally, when the merchandise is in the customs office of the buyer country, but he does not pick up the merchandise, so the seller has to pick it up. Those three are the most common, uh, however, there are other risks by external factors, 
such as the impossibility of making payments abroad due to the difficulties in the balance of payments of a country or non-compliance of foreign public buyers supported, supported by the corresponding state or others caused by internal conflicts such as a war, a terrorism and others. Lastly, those risks derived from natural disasters and catastrophic situations occurring abroad, uh, floods, uh, earthquakes, uh, volcanic eruptions, etc. The first type of risk is usually covered by private entities. On the other hand, politic risks are covered by the state and that is as it is understood because there is not enough private coverage. In the contrary of that, extraordinary risks will not be easy, if not even possible some, in some cases. To obtain it uh, through private companies and states are not that clear. For example, with uh, COVID-19, uh, there was a challenge to respect times and process as expected, uh, therefore many transactions were cancelled and each country has its own procedures, so it is better to be informed about these procedures before playing a commercial transaction, no matter how simple it looks. In terms of cost, it is almost impossible to be estimated in advance. Credit insurance companies uh, usually do not provide information until dealing with uh, real contracts. The cost can vary greatly depending on the countries to which the company exports, the type of clients it works with, the sector in question, uh, the means of collection that it uses, and above all of the volume of sales channeled by the exporter, which will give him or her more or less negotiation capacity with uh, the credit insurance company. Note to have in mind, the deadlines of transfer and tariff. There is no international regulation that applies in terms of the deadlines in which a transfer must be made between one country or another. On the other hand, there is a regulation if transfers are made within the European Union with euros. In the case of these last transfers, the amount ordered to be transferred to the account of the beneficiary, the seller, must be available at the end of the next bank business day at the latest. If the order is given in paper format, the term is extended by one bank business day. The bank can also determine a closing time for the purposes of the transfer that is prior to the closing time of the branches. Nowadays, banks are not uh, obligated to publish their rates for their services, so in order to find a list of maximum rates applicable by banks in business operations, the most practical thing is to search through internet and do a cross-check between commission rates and those uh, from the bank you are interested. However, pay attention that sometimes those rates are expressed in different units of thousands of hundreds. In any case, the commissions that uh, banks apply are subjected to negotiation by users as, as entrepreneurs and the banks. This will also depend on our relationship with the bank, but the reality is that the greater the risk, the greater the commission. Thank you for your attention.